Hello sound editors! In this tutorial, we're going to learn a little bit about tracks. Now tracks are important because that's at the heart of Audacity. That's where you do all your work and that's where all the fun is. Okay, so let's have a look. Now you can see here we have one track and it's called Muscles and it has two waveforms. The blue is the waveforms. Now you might be saying, why does one track have two waveforms? Well, this is a stereo track. And stereo means that there's different sound in the left ear and different sound in the right ear. That would be stereo. If the sound was the same in both ears, exactly the same, it would be mono. And a stereo track looks has that's how it looks as two um, waveforms. A mono track looks like this has one waveform. Okay, so that's the difference. And a mono track would have exactly the same sound in the left ear as in the right ear. Okay, so there you go. This is a stereo track. Now, if you look close at this waveform, you'll see that there are peaks and valleys. I'll just zoom in here on my zoom tool. And if you haven't watched the tutorial on how to use a zoom tool, it's a good idea to watch that. So you can see here we have peaks and valleys. The peaks are the loud parts and the valleys are the quiet parts. You can see there. So the, the, the valleys, the skinny parts of the, um, of the waveform are the really quiet sections. Let's go back to the mono file again. Look at this here. It's almost more dramatic here on the mono version because you can see, oh, I'm going to my zoom tool again. You can see the, the valleys are very narrow. I mean, that would be almost silent. And you can see this would be silence over here. No sound at all. And the really loud sounds are the big, big thick parts of the waveform. So that is the waveform. If you also, if you think about maybe a clap of thunder, it would probably look like it have big waveform with big squiggles uh, when, when the thunder would go and then it would gradually taper down to nothing as the waveform got more and more narrow. Okay, so now let's move on. On the left hand side here, there's a tab and on the tab, there's a lot of information about the track. There's a pull down at the very top. Now let's just pull that down. You can see there's the name at the top and this is how you change name. I'll show you that in a second. And there's other information here about the waveform and other things. We're not going to worry about that right here now. You can look at these things yourself if you like, but for this tutorial, we're just going to concentrate on the basics. Now, if we want to change the name of this track, you'd click name right here. So I'm going to click it and you can see it's called Muscles MP3 256K. So I'm going to delete that name and I'm going to put in Fiddle because this is a fiddle track. So Fiddle and I'm going to click OK. And now look at that. Our track is now called Fiddle. And that's a really good thing to do, especially if you have more than one track. Because when you look at it, you may not recognize the waveform. You may need to have a name to help you keep it organized. Okay? So the next thing, uh, let's move down a little further. We have mute and solo. Now, let's look at mute first. If you think about your TV, mute turns the sound off. Now, mute will do the same thing for a track. If you have multiple tracks and you want to turn the sound off in one of the tracks, you know, let's say it's a vocal track and you want to hear the song without the vocals, you would mute that track and you could hear it without it. Same thing, solo will let you hear only that track. So again, let's say, for example, you were recording a song and you had a vocal track and you wanted to hear only the vocals and no guitar, no drums, no keyboards, you would click solo and that will let you hear only that track. Very useful when you do a multi-track recording. Next thing, we have here a gain slider. Now, gain, I'm going to simplify. Gain is another word for volume. Okay, now I'm simplifying. But if you want your volume to be a little louder, you slide the gain to the right. If you want your volume to be a little quieter, you slide your gain to the left. Okay, so that's how you adjust the volume of your track. Next slider is a pan slider. Now, pan is exactly the same as balance. And you think about your stereo. If you want to um, put more sound in the right ear, you balance it to the right. If you want to put more sound in the left ear, you balance to the left. Well, pan is the, is the sound engineering word for balance. So we don't say balance, we say pan. So we pan it to the left. You can do percentage 90% or 20 or whatever. And you can pan to the right, same thing. And that will put that track more in the right ear or more in the left ear. Okay, that's pan. Now, the next thing I want to talk to you about is the um, how to resize your track. 
Now, if you have a track and you, it's taking up too much space, you can grab the bottom edge of the track and you can slide it up. Same thing, you can slide it down if you want to do some editing. Okay, if you need to see the big thick waveform, you can drag it down. It doesn't affect the volume or anything like that. It just affects the way it looks. Also, we have a little collapse button here that will collapse the track and make it uh, tiny in case you have many tracks and you need more room. Now, the last thing I'm going to talk about is this little X in the top left-hand corner. This is the delete track button. So if you have a track and it didn't work out, you recorded it and it didn't work out, you can just click this button right here and presto, it's gone. Okay, that's the delete button. Now, you can also go up to edit undo and you can undo that track remove there you go and if you want to know more about the undo feature check out the tutorial on undo and history so that's it for tracks now it's good to know this stuff because like i said we spend most of our time working on tracks that's where all the work is and of course that is where all the fun is as well